in frilly knickers. We present Arthur Lowe, John Le Measure, and Clive Dunn in Dad's Army. The Great White Hunter, featuring John Laurie, Arnold Ridley, and Ian Lavender, with this week's guests, Larry Martin, Pearl Hackney, Elizabeth Morgan, and Fraser Carr. <laughs> Here is the news, and this is John Snag reading it. The German armies now hold the upper hand on every front. They have pushed the Allied forces out of Greece and Crete. Rommel has swept victorious to the frontiers of Egypt. And in Russia, Kiev has fallen and the struggle for Moscow begun. The picture is bleak. But we are not downhearted, nor is Captain Mannering, commander of Warmington-on-Sea's home guard, as he addresses his men. I have no doubt about it, men. 1941 will go down in history as the year the parachute revolutionized military strategy. Mind you, I saw it coming years ago, but no one would listen to me. I can recall as long ago as 1936, Elizabeth and I were on holiday at Bogner, Bogner Regis, and I went up for a five-shilling trip in a biplane. And as we soared through the clouds, the wind blowing in my face, I looked down and I... <laughs> You've got free and not fight. Yes, Mr. Manry. It's no good, you won't wake up. Oh, never mind. Where was I? Go oh, yes. I looked down and the idea came to me. Parachute troops. As soon as we got back to the boarding house, to the hotel where we were staying, <laughs> I wrote a long letter to the war office explaining my entire plan. And believe it or not, gentlemen, I never even got a reply. Just, just like our great leader, Winston Churchill, I was shouting in the wilderness, Wake up, England! Oh, dear. Uh... <laughs> What's happened? Have I missed anything? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> Now, men, I expect you're wondering where all this is leading. If he doesn't hurry up, it's going to lead to us not getting a drink. <laughs> blather, blather, blather. Well, today I've received a memo from the War Office that has been sent to all Home Guard units. Now, I'm going to read it to you. To all ranks of the Home Guard, in order to create alarm and confusion, the enemy has recently been dropping numerous empty parachutes in the southern counties. In future... All parachutes found must be reported at once to GHQ. Permission to speak, sir? Yes, Jones. What happens if one of our airmen jumps out by parachute and then when he lands, he takes it off and walks away and we come along and see the parachute, but we do not know it is his because he has walked away previous. How do we know <laughs> it is a British parachute and not a Nazi one? That's a very good question, Jones. <laughs> Let me see. The ah, art, yes, I thought so. It's all here in the memo. Very simple. Our parachutes are pure white. <laughs> Nazi parachutes are a dirty, off, white, creamy colour. <laughs> That's what one would have guessed, of all. Well, there's your answer, Jones. If it's not white, it's not one of ours. Thank you, sir. <laughs> now, as you know, Hess landed in this country by parachute some time ago, so it's quite obvious that the rats are leaving the sinking ship. For all we know, several Nazi leaders may have landed in this country during the past few weeks. Excuse me, Mr. Manry. Yeah. That new commissionaire outside the cinema looks awfully like her Hitler. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> looks fast, he? Yeah, all, all, all right, all right, all right. All right. <laughs> I know it sounds absurd, but we, we must check everything. Wilson. Yes, sir. Next time you go to the pictures, ask to see the commissionaire's identity card. <laughs> <laughs> well, sir. Cut my ring. Yes, Fraser. Supposing we do find an empty parachute, mm -hmm. by the time we've reported it back to GHQ, whoever was on the end of it could be miles away. What about using a tracker dog, sir? A good dog could snap the parachute, pick up the scent, and lead us to whoever came down in it. Excellent idea, Fraser. Thank you, sir. The only snag is I don't think any of us has got a dog. Mm, yeah, it so happens my cousin Angus has one. Oh? What sort is it? It's a dachshund, sir. <laughs> Really? No, I don't think that's any good. We need something with long legs that can cover the ground. Thank you all the same. All right. Wilson, come here a moment. Yes, sir? Did you hear that? Mm -hmm. Fraser's cousin. Mm. Got an accent. Oh. German dog. <laughs> you think it's all right? 
I don't know, sir. I don't know anything about dog. Not the dog, his cousin. Oh, Angus. <laughs> Keeping a German dog doesn't put him in a very good light, you know. Mm. I think we'd better check up on him, Wilson. Yes. Is this before or after I've checked up on the cinema commissionaire? <laughs> Don't be flippant, Wilson. Doesn't become you. I can get hold of the dog for you, Mr. Mannering. Oh, well done, Walker. When can we get it here? Well, would tomorrow night be soon enough? Good, good, yes. Yes, that's settled then. Right, man, that's all for now. Parade, dismiss. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Mannering. Uh, can I have a word with you? Certainly, Walker. Come into my office, will you? Close the door, Wilson. All right, sir. Now, Walker, what is it? Well, it's uh, rather intimate. Yeah, well, I'll be off then, sir. No, 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 no. no. You stay, Wilson. All right, sir. Might be able to give some advice. You, you don't mind, do you? No, 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 no. Intimate, hey? <clears throat> now, Walker, I want you to regard me not only as your commanding officer, but also as your friend. Yes, I know, Mr. Mannering. Yes. Now, what is it? Woman? Eh? Is it a woman? I really think I should go. No, oh, come here. <laughs> Both men of the world? No, no, it's, it's not a woman, Mr. Manor. It's a parachute. Oh, is that all? I found one. What? When was this? Well, about two weeks ago, in the woods. Why on earth didn't you report it? Well, I mean, I didn't know, did I? I mean, you've only just told us today. But you should have done something about it, Walker. Well, I did do something about it. What? Well, it made up in you know, eight dozen pairs. <laughs> eight dozen pairs of what? Ladies' knickers. <laughs> Ladies' knickers? Oh, really, sir? Oh, I believe in calling a spade a spade, Wilson. That's all right if you happen to be talking about spades, but uh, <laughs> this is rather different. Oh, don't be so squeamish. How does it mean, Walker? Here we are, fighting for our lives, with our backs to the wall, living on rations cut down to the bone, going without sleep, the entire German army poised just across the channel, ready to strike... And you had a parachute made up into ladies' knickers. I do wish you wouldn't keep on using that word, sir. All right, then, bloomers! <laughs> well, I didn't think it was going to do any harm, Mr. Mannering. It was just lying on the ground. I mean, nobody wants an old parachute, do they? I mean, think of all that lovely silk going to waste. All right, Walker. Was it one of ours or one of theirs? Eh? <laughs> Haven't you been listening? Our parachutes are white. German parachutes are cream. So... Was it white or was it cream? I can't remember. But go and get a pair and have a look. Well, I can't. I sold them all of my stall in the market last Saturday. They went like hot cakes. We must find out whether they're white or cream. Well, sir, if Walker sold eight dozen pairs, plenty of people must have bought them. Good thinking, Wilson. <laughs> well, of course, there are plenty of them about. Walker, come round to the bank as soon as we close. We'll go and make some inquiries. Right, now, this looks like a fairly typical street. We start at one end and work our way down. Are you with me, Wilson, Walker? Yes, sir. All right, now leave this to me. We shouldn't have any trouble here. Oh, no, sir, no. Everybody knows me in Mormington. <laughs> Goes without saying, as a bank manager, I, I carry a lot of respect. Of course, sir. Ah, good afternoon, sir. We don't want any. Oh. <laughs> Perhaps you'd better try next door. Uh, you don't want to give up so easily, Mr. Mannering. Here, let me try. You've got to be persistent. You've got to have the technique, you know? Get the old foot in the door. Watch me, I'll show you. Ah, oh, good day, sir. I told you, we don't want any. Ow! Oh! <laughs> my foot! You've trapped my foot in the door! Well, shift it then. Well, all right, give me a chance. Oh! All right, Walker. How's your foot? Oh, it's okay. I've got another one. <laughs> Better try next door. Come on, Wilson, don't hang back. All right, sir, I'm coming. All right, here we are. Let's hope we have better luck with this one. Yeah, what do you want? Ah, oh, good afternoon, madam. That was quick. <laughs> well, come along, then. What do you want? <clears throat> well, uh, I expect you know me. I'm Mannering, the bank manager. Uh, however, I'm calling on you today in my capacity as commander of the local home guard. In short, madam, I need to see your underwear. <laughs> You all right, sir? Blimey, she's got a powerful right up there. Oh. Yes, I think we'd better move on to the next house. Yes. Are you sure you're up to it, sir? Try this time, Wilson. Oh, you think that's wise, sir? You'll get on with it. Oh, very well. Well, no need to back away like that, Wilson. Nobody's going to bite you. Well, I'm not so sure, sir. Oh, uh, hello there. Oh, <laughs> good afternoon. <laughs> well... 
What can I do for you? Well, um... <clears throat> <laughs> that is, I, um... Uh, yes? Uh, well, get on with it. Well, I wonder if I, uh, if I, if I could possibly see you. Oh, in, 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 in. oh, of course. Come in, won't you? Oh, thank you very much, madam. The hen. A good-looking one. Excuse me, sir. She means me, apparently. Oh, oh lucky old Mr. Wilson, eh? <laughs> Here, Mr. Mannering, have you noticed the extraordinary influence Mr. Wilson has over women? Yes. I'm getting a little tired of Wilson's sordid little peccadilloes. <laughs> I don't wish to discuss them, they bore me. Sorry, I spoke. Well, uh, go, uh, good day. Good day, Sylvia. <laughs> and thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome, Arthur. <laughs> TTFN. <laughs> <laughs> Take that smirk off your face. <laughs> Tell me, are they cream or are they white? Actually, sir, they're blue. <laughs> In future, you better leave this to me, Wilson. Come on. Well, I was only carrying out your order, sir. Right. I will try here. Surely we're about to have some luck here. It's very quiet, Mr. Mannering. There doesn't seem to be anybody at home. Hold on. I'll have a squint through the letterbox. Hmm? Here. There's a little boy standing in the hall, Mr. Mannering. Hello, little boy. Is your mummy at home? No, she's not. No? He's all alone in the house, Mr. Mannering. Well, that's no good, is it? Hold on, I've got an idea. Now, listen, little boy. Yes? Put your ear to the letterbox. I want to ask you something. Shan't! Go on, you little perisher, otherwise I'll clip you around the lug hole. <laughs> that's right. Now, go upstairs to your mummy's room and get done. Wilson? Huh? I don't think I like the look of this. <laughs> I never tell what Walker's up to. It's all right, Mr. Mannering. I've fixed it. There they are. I'm signing up for you. Good Lord, there's a whole crowd of people coming down the street, sir. Yeah, that's them, officer. Oh, I see you. Thank you, madam. <coughs> ah, afternoon, constable. Oh, it's you, Mr. Mannering. Well, I must say I'm a surprise. They shall be locked up. Oh, all them. right, madam. Leave this to me. <coughs> uh, no, sir. I've had complaints that you've been uh, knocking at people's doors, uh, asking uh, funny questions. Uh, you. Oh, good heavens, Mrs. Pike. That's all we need. Oh, Mavis, what on earth are you doing here? How dare you, Arthur? I mean, I've worked and slaved for you, and here you go chasing after strange women. Now, Mavis, please. And but... in broad daylight. It's disgusting. Oh, all right then, madam. Oh, I'm sorry about this, Frost, Mr. Mannering. Uh, personally, I say, uh, live and let live, eh? <laughs> Believe you me, Constable, there's a perfectly innocent explanation for this. Cooey, big nose. <laughs> Hold on, Mr. Mannering. There's a pair of niggers coming through the letterbox now. <laughs> oh, no, no. No, oh, there's a black and white frilly lace. They're not the type I'm looking for at all. Now, pay attention, men. Now, while we're waiting for Walker and the tracker dog, I shall continue my lecture on communications. In modern warfare, these are absolutely vital. So I sent a very firm letter to the War Office demanding wireless sets without further delay. What happened about that very firm letter you sent demanding a brand gun? We're not discussing guns now, Wilson. <laughs> so until Whitehall does supply us with wireless sets, we shall just have to practice with improvised ones. Now, these are in front of you. And you'll observe they consist of two tin cans connected by a length of string. So if you'll just, uh, just pick them up... Incidentally, I'm, uh, I'm very grateful to those of you who supplied us with empty treacle tins, cocoa tins, and one or two that uh, used to contain old English humbugs. <laughs> I once lost a stopping out of a tooth for the old English humbug. I once got a gobstopper stuck in my throat. I nearly choked. Oh, my dear friend, so you did, yes, yes, of course you did. I've forgotten that. Yeah, oh. Uncle Arthur had to bang me on the back to yes. bring it up. Yes. <laughs> then Mum hit him for banging me too hard. <laughs> <laughs> All right, don't, don't let's go into all that now. Marshmallows. Yeah, I beg your pardon? Marshmallows, they don't harm your teeth. Good. <laughs> now, as you probably recall from your childhood, if you speak into the tin at one end, you can hear the voice in the tin, most important, provided you keep the string tight. Turkish delight was nice and soft. <laughs> Fraser, what have I just said? Oh, I'm sorry, sir. My mind was one. Well, don't let it one. No, all right, sir. I'm not... You'll concentrate quickly enough for the Nazis start marching down the road, won't you? Of course I will. 
once. Well, concentrate now. Right. Where was I? We all have to be tight, sir. Oh, yes. <laughs> Keep our strings tight, yes. Now, all pull your strings nice and taut. That's it. <laughs> oh, dear. What's happened, Jones? My string's broken, sir. I've been cut off. Well, hurry up and tie it together. <laughs> I've tied my string together now, sir. Very good, Jones. I don't think I'd be able to receive very well on account I've got it knotted, sir. <laughs> All right, well, do, do your best, Jones. Now, with a wireless set, uh, as you know, you can't speak and listen at the same time, which is why we have to use the correct procedure. So as soon as the set is switched on, you're in the listening position, ready to receive a message. Now, do as I do. I'll put your tins to your ears. <laughs> There, mine's all sticky. Just put it, put it to your ear, boy. Now, we're all in the listening position. And, Wilson, mm -hmm. what, what, what are you doing with that pencil? You don't have to write the message down. No, no, no. <laughs> Not writing anything down, sir. There's a bit of an old English humbug stuck in the bottom of my tin. So <laughs> trying to wiggle it out. Oh, never mind the humbugs. I'm in the middle of demonstrating wireless procedure. I'm sorry, sir. Right. Now, to commence proceedings, I place one tin to my lips, and Wilson listens on the other one. And I speak as follows. Hello, all stations. Charlie One. Hello, all stations. Charlie One. Report my signal, all stations. Charlie One. Over. Is that quite clear? Well, I didn't understand one single... <laughs> You're mumbling, man, mumbling. Yes, I, I, I heard you through the tin, sir. I was getting a bit of interference from the humbug, but uh, <laughs> on the whole, it was rather good. What I said was, Hello, all stations, Charlie One. Hello, all stations, Charlie One. Report my signal, all stations, Charlie One. Over. Mr. Manorine? Yes? Yeah. What's Charlie One? <laughs> Wilson is Charlie One, but oh. I use his call sign. How do we know who's who, then? Well, it's quite simple, really. Eh? I'm saying hello to all of you. You, Wilson, are Charlie One, you, Fraser, are Charlie Two, Pike is Charlie Three, and so on. But if you're trying to talk to me, why don't you say, hello, Charlie Two? Because that's what you say when you talk to me. You say, hello, Charlie Two. You mean I say, hello, to me? No, no, you say, hello, to me. <laughs> hey, why, don't, why don't you say, hello, Charlie One? Well, because they, they don't do it like that. Oh, for God. <laughs> Manreen, mm -hmm. are we all Charlies, then? For the time... <laughs> For the time being, we'll imagine that everyone is headquarters. And so we'll all say, hello, Charlie One. Uh, Captain Manry, mm -hmm. uh, my name really is Charlie. <laughs> Does that make any difference? No difference at all, Governor. <laughs> right. Now, all together. One, two, three. Hello, all stations, Charlie One. Hello, all stations, Charlie One. Not bad, not bad at all. Permission to speak, sir. What did you say, Jim? Oh, sorry, sir. I said permission to speak, sir. What is it? Well, I think I've got the hang of it now, sir. I should like to do it on my own, sir. Oh, I, I don't think you're quite ready, Jones. Oh, let me go solo, sir. I'd like to go solo. <laughs> all right, we will. This is going to be good. Hello, all stations, Charlie One. Hello, all stations, Charlie One. Report my signals, all stations, Charlie One. Okay. It's very good, Jones. Thank you, sir. In fact, it was absolutely correct. Well done. Thank you, sir. You see, Pikey, they all thought I was going to get it wrong, didn't they? You did it beautifully, Mr. Jones. I'm not as big a fool as I look, you know. <laughs> all right, all right. Now, let's start again. <laughs> now, steady, boy, steady, boy. Ah, oh, Walker. All right, man, hold it for a minute. Here you are, Mr. Mannering. One track a dog has ordered. Not an unusual looking dog, Walker. <laughs> well, he's a cross between a wolf and a whippet, sir. <laughs> he's what you call a whoppet. I see. <clears throat> By the way, did you, um, did you manage to track down any of those, um, you know? No, 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 I'm sorry, sir, uh, not a pair. No, sir. It looks as if we'll never know if they were cream or white. <laughs> We've got to find out. It's very important. We'll discuss this later. Can't afford another <laughs> for the policeman's ball. Well, how do you mean, sir? Well, that's what it cost me to placate that constable yesterday. Oh, yes, of course, yes. I, I still haven't explained about that to Mrs. Pike. Why not? Well, I, 
Well, she's, uh, she's not really speaking to me at the moment, sir. I'm afraid I find your domestic squabbles very tiresome, Wilson. Well, I, I left a little present for her at home. Uh, a quarter of aniseed balls. <laughs> I thought they might sweeten her up. She's very fond of aniseed balls, you know. Mm. Personally, I would have thought acid drops might have been more appropriate. <laughs> anyway, let's have a look at that dog. Think he's got the stamina to track across miles of country? Of course he has. This dog would keep going for days, couldn't you, boy? Eh? Eh? Really? <laughs> Why is he lying on the floor like that? <laughs> Looks exhausted. Well, he's walked all the way from my place, hasn't he? We well, only live just around the corner. <laughs> yeah, I know, but uh, it's uphill, isn't it? Yeah. Well, the best thing we can do is try him out under actual combat conditions. See what he's like as a tracker. All right, men, put your wireless sets down. I up and ground your tin can, do as the captain says. <laughs> now, pay attention. We want someone to be the Nazi parachutist so that the dog can pick up his scent. Permission to speak, sir? Yes. I should like to volunteer to be the Nazi parachutist so the dog can pick up my scent. <laughs> Very well, then. Right, Walker, take the dog and the rest of the platoon outside, and as soon as Jones has laid the scent, I'll blow the whistle. Right, you are, Mr. Mannery. Come on, lads. If that dog can do the job, Wilson, he's going to be a great asset to this platoon. Yeah, it's an awfully nice dog. Oh, no, Mavis. How are you? I've just seen that horrible dog outside. Oh. You're not to let it go anywhere near Frank. It's, it's quite harmless. You can catch some very nasty things from those mongrels. Oh, it's not a mongrel, Mrs. Pike. It's our tracker dog. Well, anyway, Frank's not to go near it. Do you hear? I am running this tour, Mrs. Pike. And I shall decide that. I must ask you to leave. It'll be my business if it starts Frank's hay fever up again. <laughs> He's allergic to dogs. <laughs> You really will have to speak to her, Wilson. I can't have these constant interruptions. All right, sir, yes. Right, now, Jones. Yes, Mr. Manred? I want you to imagine that you've just been dropped by parachute. What, what do you think you ought to be, Wilson? Hmm? Nazi war leader who's come to give himself up? Spy? Or saboteur? Oh, I don't know. Saboteur, yes? Hmm? Well, try and show some enthusiasm. <laughs> <laughs> you better be a saboteur, Jones. And you've landed by parachute... To blow up a key position. Very well, sir. Now take your jacket off. What for, sir? So that the dog can pick up your scent. Oh, right, right, sir. Right. Ah, there we are, sir. Right. Ah, so, this is Bormington on sea. You can help me to guns and foot me to a feed and stop, stop, Just a minute, Joan, 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 just a minute. Why are you saying it with your hand on your hip? Well, I'm a continental saboteur, sir. Oh, I see. I think. I will blow up a key position. I think I will blow up the bank. You better make it the town hall. <laughs> well, I think I'd better blow up the town hall. Here's my jacket, sir. Thank you. I must be off now before I am spotted. If we'll go over the roadie. Is it all right if I go through your office, sir? Yeah, yes, get on with it. Right, sir, right, sir. Yes, sir. I'm going, sir. Captain Manning, sir. What is it now, Joan? I've made a smell in your office, sir. <laughs> Thank you, Joan. I can now go and make a further one up the tower steps. <laughs> Get on with it. Right, sir, I'm going now, sir. He's gone up to the bell tower, sir. Good. I'll get the trackers in. <laughs> We're ready, sir. <laughs> right. Have you got a strong enough leash on that dog walker? We don't need Joan. <laughs> don't worry, Mr. Manning. I've got him well under control. Hey, 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 <laughs> well, that must be it, then. He's got a nose like a bloodhound, this one. <laughs> yes, well, take care, Walker. We don't want the whole platoon torn to shreds. Now, then, here's Jones' jacket. Let's see if the dog can pick up the scent. OK. Here, boy. Have a sniff of that. Go on. Go on. He's <laughs> Come on. We're off. That's it, boy. Go Look on. at that, sir. Look at that. Straight into your office. They're coming out again. Where's he going now? Oh, look, sir. He's making for the bell tower. John's must be going there. Come on. Hi, Joe. He's picking up the scent well, Wilson. Oh, awfully good, sir. Yes. Arthur. Oh, 
<laughs> oh, it's, it's you, Mavis, is it? I, I wish you wouldn't creep up on me like that, you know. Don't be silly. I wasn't creeping up on you. Mrs. Pike, you here again. I, I, I thought you were going home. Well, I was. Then I remembered what I came in for in the first place. I wanted to thank you for the aniseed balls. Oh, it was a lovely thought, Arthur. No, oh, it was nothing, really. <laughs> would you like one? What, uh, uh, no, no thanks, no. Uh, Mr. Mannering, would you like one? No, thank you, Mrs. Pike. A little early in the day for me. Oh. Anyway, I'm on duty. Captain Mannering, sir. First in the speak, sir. Yes, Joan. I've blown up the town halls, sir. Well done. Permission to leave your office, sir? Oh, yes, 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 yes. Thank you, sir. Oh, quick, quick, boys. Jones has gone into the office. Come on, lads. He's in the office. After him, boy. Come on. Hold on, boy. Where are you going? Oh, she's in the office, not over there. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, don't be silly, Mavis. He's after Jones, don't you? Oh, stop him, Arthur! Stop him! All right, steady, boy, steady. Control that dog, Walker. I can't, Mr. Mannering. He's picked up the scent or something. Oh! He's after my ass, he pulls! Oh, he'll have no gun. No, he will. Mavis, Mavis, are you all right? No, I'm not. Here, help me up. All right, Mavis, all right. Hold, hold on to my hand. Look, that'll have to wait. Wilson, get rid of those aniseed balls. All right, sir. Right. Frank... Throw these out of the window. All right, Uncle Arthur. Go on. Get off your horrible thing. Go on. Go on. Shoot. Shoot. Yeah. Now, Mavis, Mavis, please. For heaven's sake, don't, don't, please, just lie there like that. At least, at least straighten your dress. I mean, you're, you're showing all your... Uh, what, what do you call Nickers, it? Nickers. Master Mannering. Yes. <laughs> Nickers. I beg your pardon, Walker? Well, uh, seeing this apartment floor like that, it's just reminded me. I sold her the last pair of knickers. And they're white. So they are. <laughs> Thank goodness, the parachute was one of ours. <laughs> In that episode of Dad's Army, based on the original television series by Jimmy Perry and David Croft, you heard Arthur Lowe as Captain Mannering, John LeMessure as Sergeant Wilson, Clive Dunn and Corporal Jones, John Lally, Private Fraser, Arnold Ridley, Private Godfrey, Ian Lavender, Private Pike, Larry Martin, Private Walker, Pearl Hackney, Mrs. Pike, Elizabeth Morgan, housewife, and Fraser Cars, the policeman. The Great White Hunter was adapted for radio by Michael Knowles and Harold Snow and produced by John Dias. Now, next week, do you remember... Don't tell him your name, Pike, or something like that anyway. A Nazi captain is brought in by the old boys, but it's the prisoner who seems to be in charge. The fabulous episode called The Deadly Attachment is next Monday at half two and half past nine here on Seven. Seven. Well, that's your lot from me for today. I'll be back again tomorrow, though. So if you're about to join me again for the news quiz, Hancock's half hour, and, of course, the next chapters from our Dick Francis story, Proof, and Josephine Tay's The Daughter of Time. It's all happening from 12 noon with me, Michaela Saunders. Stick around now, though, for the Little Toe Show. Kirsten O'Brien is with us next. But from me, and until tomorrow, take it easy and have a great afternoon. about how I got here. Didn't you get a train? No, not here to be towed, but here. You know, how I came to exist. What? I don't know the answer to that, but I know someone who does. What, Blazing Squad? No, silly. Yes, they're on the show, but I meant Toby May from the Natural History Museum. He'll be able to answer all your questions. Blazing Squad are in the studio, but how will they get here? Look, stop it now. They'll be in after four, and you guys at home can email in with your questions. We've also got three brand new stories, The Kite Rider, Switches, and The Girl from the Sea. Music and competitions, and of course, Big Toe. Join us after all, have a little show with Kirsten. It's the Little Toe Show. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Little Toe with me, Kirsten O'Brien, and these ten excited little wigglers. <laughs> oh, I just can't stop my toes tingling at the thought of what's in today's show. <laughs> Can you believe it? We've got not one. Not two, but three. Yes, that's three 
knew stories. I